Assalamualaikum and good day to everyone. Now we continue our new topic on chapter 2 part 2. The objective of the lecture today is to study the Cartesian factors and at the end of the lecture you should be able to solve the problem of resultant force and direction in 2D and 3D cases. Now let's start with the definitions of Cartesian vector. So what is a Cartesian vector? Cartesian vector it is a coordinate system and it is used to describe the position and then commonly position can be defined by its coordinate as is and also it is a unit vector so the position direction can be represented by the unit vector. So let's say we have a uh, position A. So we can define what is the position A. So the unit vector A is equal to vector A divided by its magnitude. So this is the formula for the unit vector. And it has a magnitude is 1 and the magnitude is dimensionless. So dimensionless means that no unit. Also, commonly, position vector is denoted as i, j and k. So, what is the i, j and k? So, you may refer to this as is. So, we have, uh, let's say this is the 3D. So, D, 3D is as this. We have x, y and z. So, now, i, Okay. This R is represent a unit vector pointing in the X direction. And then this J is a unit vector pointing the Y direction. And the last one, K is a unit vector pointing the Z direction. Okay, And also, we are using this right-handed. So this right-handed represent the positive direction. So let's say your thumb. So your thumb represents the positive Z. And then your finger curl here represents the X positive. And your wrist here represents the Y positive. So you must remember your right handed that can represent the positive directions of I, J, K. Position vector, it is important in air transport. It is because air traffic controller or pilot must know the location of every aircraft in the sky. Without the coordinate system, the position or location of aircraft is difficult to know and may lead to aircraft crashes. Next, applications of Cartesian vector. So, for this example, Cartesian commonly applied in the military service. Why? Because we want to know the positions or locations of our enemy. And then in the GPS system, so we need to know the positions of anybody in the real world in terms of the locations of place, we need to know the address. We can know the address. We can tracking um, the GPS by uh, information of latitude, longitude, and also for the uh, construction project plan, for the architecture. So you are you are going to use the Cartesian vector um, in your AutoCAD drawing. Next, so here. This is the number one of the application uh, Cartesian vector. Is to solve the problem in 2D. So number one, we need to resolve. So this is uh, the first step. We need to resolve the vector into components. And then uh, second step is we need to add the vector after we resolve into component. So refer to this figure. For this example, we have F here. So, this force F, we need to resolve into component I. 
resolve into component J. So, you must remember I is in the X axis and then J in is the Y axis. So, don't forget about the positive direction. So, for this 2D, so this is the positive direction of X and this is the positive direction of Y. So, this example, so we have, uh, after we resolve into component, then we, we can have that F is equal, F is equal FXI plus FYG. So, how you obtain this FXI and FYG? So, you must remember, okay, if we have theta here, so, you may resolve. So, you may resolve the Fxi is equal to F cos theta. Okay, this is for I. And then, how about Y? So, Y. So, Y. So, Fy is equal to F sin theta. You got it? Okay. So, next here. So, this figure show that F prime. This is the F prime. So, the components of F prime is what? So, we have the F X prime. Okay, F prime X. Okay, F prime in X. Okay, and then we have F prime Y. So, remember this I is positive. And then this J is negative because uh, upward is positive so downward is negative so you're going to have that f prime is equal to f prime x i minus f prime y j so this is how you need to resolve the factor into its component right so here so how if we have more than one forces, so that is why we need to resolve every of forces into the vectors x and y. So let's say here we have three forces. Step one, step one, okay, step one. If we have uh, three forces like this. So, we need to resolve into vector x and vector y component. So, like this. So, this is the F1. So, this F1, we need to resolve into F1x and F1y. So, this is our F. Okay, and then we have here F2. So, F2, we need to replace. We need to resolve into component F2X and F2Y. So, this is the F2. This is F1. And then the last one, F3. So, this F3, we need to resolve into F3X and F3Y. So, next, we need to write. So, when you write uh, all the components in X and EY, you must remember the positive and negative. So, upward is positive, downward is negative. So, this is negative y and this is negative x. So, next step is after you write the component, so you can add the component into respective component. So, component means that if you have uh, in I, J, K, so for this 2D, you only have I, J, right? So you need to group K, I, in I, J, in J. Okay? And this is the last answer. So let's say when, when you add the F1 and F2, F3, so we can determine the force resultant. So the force resultant is summations of... F1, F2 and F3. So, after you resolve into components, you must write. So, what is the component of F1? So, F1 is equal to 
F1 Xi plus Fy J and then here so what is the F2 so F2 you can write F2 is equal to negative 2xi plus f2y so you must remember the negative and positive and the last one f3 so f3 is f3x minus f3y so after you write the component of the force then you must group you must group the component respectively so for this example you group for the i and then you group for the j so the last one we can determine that fr is equal to summation of fr xi plus fr y j so this is the vector only this is the vector for the fourth resultant now how to get the magnitude for this fourth resultant so step 3 this is the equations or the formula to determine the magnitude for the force resultant. So force resultant is equal to square root FRX exponential 2 plus FRY exponential 2. So this is the magnitude of the force resultant. And then how about the angle? So the direction, so must remember so direction is measured from this axis, the x axis. So direction is here, right? So this is the direction of the force resultant. So based on this figure, so that actually is how to determine this angle. So this angle is determined by the okay, tangent theta is equal to what f okay, f r y the magnitude of f r y divided by the magnitude of f r x so that's why theta is equal to shift tension of magnitude of f r y divided by f r x so this is the direction for the force resultant you got it next here here is how to resolve into component vector so as what i mentioned before so this is i mean you may refer to this figure so if you have a um, force here so if you want to resolve into the component i here and component j so you can have that f is equal to fxi plus fyj but how you want to determine this uh, fxi and fyj is like this so if we have uh, theta here then you may resolve to this x as is so f cos theta so the fx is equal to f cos theta and then fy so fy here fy is equal to f sine theta and then to determine the magnitude of f you can have this equation and to determine the direction of f, you can have this equation. Theta is equal to shift tangent Fy divided by Fx. Now, the second application of Cartesian vector is to solve the resultant force in 3D vector. So, you may refer to this figure. So, this figure is a 3D as is. So, you have as is in Z. Okay, here is X and Y. So, you must remember your right hand row. So, upward is a positive Z. Here is a positive Y and here is the positive X. So, now let's say we have a vector A here. So, this vector A is in 3D. So, now we want to resolve vector A into the i j and k so you can have that factor a is equal to a x i plus a y j plus a z k uh, so this is the vector a so this is uh, this vector 
Okay, so this vector A is the A X R here, and then here is A Y J, and then here is A Z K. Next, let's say if you have two vector in three D, you have vector A and vector B, so you can write like this and this. So now we want to determine what is the first resultant. Okay, so we can determine the first resultant by additions of vector A and vector B. So here, in uh, once the vectors are present in Cartesian, so it is easy to subtract. So now, so the first resultant is equal to summations of the all forces so what is the all forces so here you need to group all the force in i all the force in j and all the force in k so when you add when you sum all the vector then you can solve for the first resultant so this is the example Okay, the force is written of the vector A and vector B. So this one, this is the vector A, this is the vector B. So next, second step, you need to group I in I. So this is I, so this is J and this is K. You must grouping into respective component. So in I, you have AX plus BY. A, B, X. So, here is the B, X. And then, uh, in J, you have A, Y plus B, Y. And then, K, you have A, Z plus B, Z. So, this is the last answer. So, must remember, this is the vector, not magnitude yet. So, first resultant, uh, this is the C. Uh, for example, this is C. So, we have C, X, I plus C, Y, J and C, Z, K. Next, how to determine the magnitude and direction angle in 3D vector. So, you should be understand that magnitude and the coordinate direction angle. So, in 3D, we have coordinate direction angle because we're going to have three angles after this. Okay. And then we also need to get what is the magnitude and projections angle. So here, first, magnitude of Cartesian vector A in the XY plane is the A prime. So you can refer to this uh, figure. So you, you want to determine what is the A here. So this component A is come from by the this Z, A Z and A prime, right? So, A is come from the A prime squared plus A Z squared. So, you have to get the magnitude, you can have the square root here. Okay, how is the A prime come? So, A prime is here, this shadow area. So, this is the A prime. So, this is A prime. So, A prime components is the AXI plus AYJ. Okay. So, this is the A prime. Alright. So, now, so we need to determine what is the magnitude of the position A. So, by combining this and this, we can have the magnitude for the Vector A. So, A is equal to square root of A X expansion 2 plus A Y expansion 2 plus A Z expansion 2. You got it? Next is the direction or all tensions of vector A. So, it is defined by the angles of alpha, beta and gamma. So here, these anchors are measured between the vector 
and the positive x, y and z respectively. And also, the range of value of the alpha, beta, agama is in between 0 to 190. So, here. So, now, let's take a look. Okay, so kita, we, we launch this one. Okay, so now, this is our vector A. So, first is alpha. So, this is alpha. So, alpha must remember is measure from the vector to the x as is. So, this is the, okay, this is the x as is. Alright. And then this is y as is and this is z as is. So, we must remember alpha is from vector to the as is x. So, that is the alpha. Okay. So, now beta. So, beta is from the vector a to the as is y. So, this is beta. And the last one is... The last one is gamma. So, this is gamma. So, this gamma is from vector A to as is Z. Uh, so, you must... Need, right. So, you need to understand that what is alpha. So, what is alpha? What is beta? And what is gamma? How to measure... Okay, how to measure the angle. So, you rem must remember that alpha is measured from the axis and uh, from the vector to the axis x and then beta from the vector to the axis y and then gamma from the vector to axis z. Okay, you must uh, know how to identify what is alpha, beta and Gamma. Okay, next. How to determine the value of the alpha, beta and gamma? Okay, so this is the relationship. So now, cos alpha, okay, by using the trigonometry direction consign. So we found that cos alpha is equal to vector ax divided by its magnitude. And then uh, cos Beta is equal to vector ay divided by its magnitude. And the last one that cos alpha is equal to vector az divided by its magnitude. And then, these angles are not independent. So, it must satisfy the following equation. So, it means that we have uh, cos explanation up to alpha plus cos Beta explanation 2 plus cos gamma explanation 2 is equal to 1. So, this is the relationship. So, let's say you only know uh, these two angles. Okay, let's say you only know the alpha and beta. So, the gamma is unknown. So, you can determine by this relationship. And then, it can be derived from the coordinate direction angles and the unit vector because we understood that unit vector of any position is equal to unit vector let's say for vector A is equal to vector divided by its magnitude so this is the formula so you know that what is the components of vector A so components of vector A is the a, X, R, A, Y, J, L, Z, K. So, this component respective into X, Y, Z, uh, when divide with the magnitude, you can determine the this alpha, beta and gamma respectively. You got it? Next, unit vector A can also be expressed as the cos alpha i plus cos beta j plus cos gamma k. If we already know the info of alpha, the value of beta and also the value of gamma, then you can write 
the vector into Cartesian by using this relationship. Okay, because um, a vector A expressed in Cartesian form is like this. So, this is the vector A and this is the magnitude times with the unit vector. So, this is the unit vector. So, and then we can understood that uh, from this uh, from this factor components. So, when we want to determine the value of alpha, beta and gamma. So, you can have this the vector AX divided by its magnitude for the alpha. And then for this is for, for the beta. AY divided by magnitude and then for the gamma. Is that divided by the its magnitude? This one, if you want to get what is the coordinate direction angle, the answer, right? 